good morning. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Benyard BY5164M. This watch is available from Benyard Factory Store on AliExpress for €31. Euro. So firstly let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So the Benyard BY5164M comes in this black cardboard watch box. One removes the lid to the watch box and inside the watch sits on a piece of foam as one would expect. So the watch and the piece of foam sit within this cut out foam panel and that does suffice in protecting the watch in shipping from any damages. So aesthetically pleasing and although basic it does suffice in protecting the watch. One also gets an owner's instruction manual which is in English and it is basic, it does have some diagrams and text but it does detail how to operate the various complications of the mecha quartz movement used in this chronograph. So very useful read if you're unfamiliar with mecha quartz movements such as the Sunon PE902 used in the piece. One also gets this Benyard branded microfiber polishing cloth and I always think irrespective of the price point of a watch it's always nice to get a branded microfiber polishing cloth. So with regards to the watch itself, the Benyard BY5164M is clearly on homage to the Amiga Speedmaster chronograph. If you look at the lug shape and the case shape you can clearly see the similarity between the Seamaster chronograph and this piece. Also the bezel shape and the aluminium bezel insert are copies of the Amiga Seamaster chronograph. Same Arabic font, same uh, minute ticks for 60 seconds around the bezel insert. So it does represent, it does do a very good job of being an homage to the Seamaster with regards to its bezel and also case shape. Now with regards to the specification, it's a 42mm case diameter, it has a 49mm lug to lug measurement, 13mm thickness and it has a 20mm lug width. So very similar proportions to the Amiga Seamaster chronograph which it is an homage to. It's glazed with a hardlex crystal which is effectively mineral crystal which is coated with a scratch resistant coating and I would say that it's a good choice and it's a credit to Benyard that they haven't cut corners with regards to the production costs. For example they could have simply used an uncoated mineral crystal which wouldn't have been as scratch resistant. Hardlex is used by Seiko and it is more scratch resistant than mineral crystal but it's not as hard and scratch resistant as sapphire crystal so I think the use of Hardlex is a satisfactory compromise bearing in mind that this is €31. Euro. With regards to the hands they've clearly copied the Amiga Seamaster hands and they are aesthetically pleasing and they are partially skeletonized. They do suffice in providing some loom plots um, which do complement the applied indices. I like the symmetry of the dial with the three sub-dials at the 9, 6 and 3 o'clock position and they've chosen to put the date complication at the, in between the 4 and 5 o'clock position. So that retains the symmetry of the dial layout and I like the fact that the dial isn't overbranded with text or specification. It simply has the Benyard brand emblem and logo at 12 o'clock and there's no other additional text um, which would be unnecessary bearing in mind that this is only a 30 meter water resistant piece and it's powered by a mecha quartz movement. So nice looking watch. Now one thing I like about it is if you look closely at the dial there are grooves cut into the dial which replicates the ceramic wave pattern dial of the Amiga Seamaster which this is an homage to. And it adds interest to the dial. I think uh, Benyard deserve full credit for coming up with their own dial design rather than just copying the Seamaster chronograph directly. And also they could have just opted for a just matte black painted dial rather than this one with the grooves cut into it. So nice 3D effect when one tilts the piece at an oblique angle. The grooves in the dial do catch the light and they do complement the applied indices. Clearly legible in all light conditions. Uh, there isn't any AR coating on the underside of the Hardlex crystal, so as you can see, it is highly reflective, and that is a negative of the piece. But one has to expect those kind of cross cutting measures, bearing in mind it's only €31. Euro. Now, with regards to the bezel, it's very well finished in terms of the mirror polishing to uh, the Amiga Seamaster style bezel with the flats on it. But one thing I have to draw to your attention is Nice loud clicks, it's a 60 click unidirectional bezel, but however, there is lateral play side to side in the bezel. It does feel sloppy rather than being a tight fit. And the other thing I notice is there is significant back play in the bezel action. So yes, it does suffice in that it does click, it does have 60 clicks, it is unidirectional, but when one brings up the triangle and the loom pip to 12 o'clock, 
to align with the 12 o'clock index. As you can see, I'll just show you, there is significant backplay and I think it's unacceptable. Even though this is only uh, 31 euro, I think to have that amount of backplay in a bezel is wholly unacceptable. Bezel action is something that's quite simple to get uh, correct. One can adjust the tension spring under the bezel. There we are, you can see it clearly now. There's a full two to three clicks of backlash and um, if it was just half a click I would say that that's acceptable but really two to three clicks of backplay in a bezel is unacceptable. Now it does align correctly, one can bring it up to the 12 o'clock index and it will align but the problem is it's just the back play really does spoil it so that back play is compounded by the lateral side to side play it really does feel like a sloppy execution so poor quality control poor build quality and a clear cost cutting measure with regards to production costs they have they haven't um, executed the bezel to a satisfactory standard now with regards to the pushers, they do provide an effective hermetic seal to 30 metres of water resistance, solid stainless steel and they are surrounded by a coin edge finish knurling. But however, although they do look like screw down pushers, they're not actually screw down, they're simply push in pushers. And also the solid stainless steel crown is a push pull crown rather than being screw down, coin edge finished, unsigned and it has a silver domed cap to it as you can see. So they do work, uh, the pushers, when one presses the top pusher, if you look at the uh, six o'clock subdial, you'll see it begins to tick the chronograph runs. And when one presses the top pusher again, it stops the chronograph. When one presses the bottom pusher, it resets the chronograph complication. So yes, the Mecha Quartz chronograph movements used in this piece, the Sunon PE902, it does work and it does reset correctly. Um, the subdials do reset to zero correctly and they do align, so one has to give due credit for that. But it's a shame that the pushers aren't screw down pushers because that would provide a more effective hermetic seal better than 30 meters. For example, they could have gained 100 meters of water resistance. Something to bear in mind, with regards to build quality and also the water resistance, I think it's worth paying the extra to buy a Pagani design. Because one thing I liked about the Pagani design uh, chronograph is that it's an homage to the Daytona, but it uses screw down pushes uh, and also a screw down crown, which is more effective than these push pull crowns and also the push in pushes. So something to bear in mind, a cost cutting measure, I think it's worth paying the extra to get screw down crowns and also screw down, cush, uh, sc screw down pushes on a case. So with regards to the case polishing, uh, very well executed. Flawless mirror finishing to the tops of the lugs, flanks of the case, the underside of the case and the bezel throughout. Now one thing I like about it is the attention to detail. The silicon rubber strap is good quality, signed with the Benyard brand logo, it's laser engraved to a high standard, mirror polished, flawless and also we have the Benyard branding engraved into the two sliding keepers. So it's a good quality thick silicon rubber strap, good thick gauge of metal to the buckle and tang, it's going to last for a good length of time. I like the fact that the silicon rubber strap is integrated. There's no gap between the spring bars and the case. As you can see, it's curved end to the end of this silicon rubber strap, so it does fit very well to the case. Also, I like the thickness of the end of the rubber strap. Good reinforcements around the most prone to crack area, which is around the spring bar where the strap meets the case. This is the part that flexes the most, and also it tends to split in uh, long-term use uh, around the spring bar. So it's a good, solid, well-made silicon strap. Supple enough to wear without any breaking in. It's going to feel comfortable, but also rigid enough to last a good length of time. The underside have, uh, has grooves uh, engraved into it, and. Uh, this is actually very practical. The moulded grooves mean that it allows for some air and it allows uh, sweat to wick off the wrist. So therefore, it's not going to be uncomfortable and sweaty if one wears this in warm weather or for long periods of time when active. So nice feature to have those grooves underneath the um, strap rather than just being smooth. With regards to the case back, I have to give due credit to Benyard. They've done an excellent job in laser engraving the solid stainless steel case back. Now it is a pressed on case back rather than being a screw down case back so it is only going to provide an effective hermetic seal to 30 meters of water resistance but as i've discussed this is a chronograph piece rather than being a dive piece so 30 meters is perfectly acceptable 
really good quality mirror polishing to the circumference of the uh, pressed on case back and also satin finish to the laser engraving it really is done to a very high standard that one doesn't usually see at this price point and i think that it is something which is both very aesthetically pleasing but also it means that it's very smooth and flat on the wrist so it does enhance the comfort and feel good factor of the watch very impressive polishing to the solid stainless steel case the case back and also the bezel of the watch now, with regards to the build quality, another criticism I have is the aluminium bezel insert. Yes, from a distance, it does look aesthetically pleasing. It does a good job of being an homage to the Amiga Seamaster bezel insert. But if one looks closely at the anodized aluminium bezel insert, there are streaks in the black anodizing. So it's not perfect. And I think it's disappointing. The loom pip is correctly aligned within the triangle. So I've no criticisms on that, despite the poor bezel action and back play, as I've discussed. But really, the quality of the, al the aluminium bezel insert in terms of its build quality, the finishing, is poor. It's irritating to see those streaks in the black anodizing. And I think that's an area that could be improved upon because it is inexpensive to produce good quality aluminium bezel inserts. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how the watch fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now, if you have a 6 to 7 inch wrist, this watch is going to fit you no problem at all. But as you can see, I have an 8 inch wrist and the strap is just a fraction too short. Yes, I can engage the tang and the buckle uh, in the last hole, but there's just a not, not enough length. If it was just half an inch longer on the rubber strap, I would be able to fit it within the two keepers. So that's something to bear in mind. If you are a collector with a seven to eight inch wrist, yes, this watch is going to fit you, but if you have an eight or over wrist, that isn't going to work. You're going to need a longer strap. However, inexpensive to uh, change the rubber strap. And also this watch would look quite good on a NATO strap as an alternative. Now, the feel good factor and the comfort of this watch is outstanding. Curved profile to the Amiga Seamaster style lugs mean that it does fit very snugly to the wrist. Very comfortable piece to wear due to the flat stainless steel case back as I've discussed. It's a good looking piece and one has to bear in mind that this is only €31 Euro, and it's hard not to be critical on a watch like this because there are some shortcomings but however one has to consider the value proposition which is outstanding. I do like the grooves in the dial, it does add an interest and I do like the symmetrical dial layout by putting the date complication between 4 and 5 o'clock, it works very well. The white date wheel is clearly legible in all light conditions with the black Arabic numerals. So it does suffice, the Mecha Quartz uh, movement does work as intended and it is clearly legible, the dial and hands are easy to read despite the lack of AR coating. So comfortable piece to wear and as I've discussed due to a lack of heft, it's only 73 grams, it is a very lightweight comfortable piece. The 12 month warranty is very reassuring, so for example if you buy one and yours also suffers with this bezel back play, uh, one can return the watch for refund or exchange. Now with regards to the movement used, it uses the Sunon PE902. Now on AliExpress they've made a mistake and Benioff Factory still have described the movement as the PE904 which is the same movement but it has a different orientation of the subdials. They're not at 9, 6 and 3. It has a two year battery life which is perfectly acceptable. It runs uh, the frequency of the quartz oscillator is 32,768 hertz as one would expect with a mecha quartz movement. The stated accuracy of the PE902 is plus or minus 30 seconds per month. So I want you to consider that. Plus or minus 30 seconds per month accuracy equates to plus or minus one second per day. So that is very accurate. Uh, although it's a basic low cost uh, mecha quartz movement, plus or minus one second per day with a two year battery life is very impressive. Now, my criticism of the Sunon PE902 is that it's not as reliable as the Seiko VK63 Maker Quartz movement, which is used in the Pagani design Daytona homage. And I really think that's something you need to consider because with regards to build quality, the Sunon PE902 has poor build quality, poor quality control. Yes, the accuracy and the battery life are good, but really it is the luck of the draw whether one gets a good one or a bad one. So, although the watch is covered by a 12-month international warranty, I would have my reservations about a piece with a PE902. 
Personally, I think it's worth paying the extra and buying a Pagani Design uh, chronograph such as their Daytona homage because that uses the Seiko VK63, better build quality, uh, better quality control, better reliability, and also it's just a well-proven, reliable, solid uh, workhorse mecha quartz movement made in Japan rather than China. So something to bear in mind, this is only 31 euro. It does have a value proposition, but I would personally prefer to pay 70 euro and buy a Pagani design with a better quality Seiko Mecha Quartz movement. So let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to its absolute maximum. So I'm going to use my 100 LED UV torch to charge it up to its absolute peak. Now, bearing in mind this is only 31 euro, I don't have high expectations of the quality of the loom. One isn't going to get BGW9 Super Luminova on a watch costing only 31 euro. Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, initially the Luminova, which is a green C3 tone, does glow brightly on both the hands and the applied indices. So it's aesthetically pleasing, it does give the impression of tritium loom, it has a nice green tone to the C3, but it's clearly Luminova rather than Super Luminova. So the Luminova is clearly a cost cutting measure, and as you can see, it's immediately beginning to fade and fade fast. So it's as I would expect. The loom isn't very good quality and I would say that it's okay at this price point but it's certainly uh, not the best quality I've seen and I think that it's something that could be improved upon with the use of C3 Super Luminova. Yes, it's more expensive and it would mean a price increase but it would be a worthwhile enhancement. So lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should be the watch should meet both uh, two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. The respective price point of this Benyard BY5164M is 31 euro. So yes, it is undoubtedly excellent value. One cannot argue that uh, at 31 euro. They have clearly have produced the best quality watch they can at that price point, retailing it at 31 euro and making a profit. Um, but however, I cannot say that it's excellent quality due to the main problem of the bezel back play. Lateral play and also back play is unacceptable at any price point and it's something that's easy to rectify. Also, my minor criticism of the finishing to the aluminium bezel insert, it's poorly anodized and that's something that needs to be improved upon irrespective of the low tier price point of the watch. So I would say the quality is okay, bearing in mind the price, but for that reason, the shortcomings, I cannot recommend it. Yes, one is going to expect poor quality loom at this price point and one is going to see some cost cutting measures such as a push pull crown and a pressed on case back rather than a screw down case back. It's a nice looking watch, but unfortunately there are just too many shortcomings for me to recommend it to you for your consideration. So I want you to be, to be mindful of the shortcomings and I'm simply going to say it's a watch that one could um, buy at 31 euro and enjoy wearing, but one would have to put up with the shortcomings. I would say to you a better option is to buy a Pagani design, pay the extra, get the Seiko VK63 uh, Mecha Quartz movement and also get the enhancements like the screw down crown, screw down pushers, screw on case back and the better hermetic seal to 100 meters of water resistance. Overall the Pagani design is a better watch and yes I think it's worth paying the extra. So I hope you've liked my review of the Benyard BY5164M. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.